Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. And I'm Courtney. And Courtney, how are you? Well, here's the thing. It has been the longest weekend of my entire life. This weekend has lasted four years. Um, Enough events happened in it that it should have. It started with me trekking through... New Jersey, Manhattan, and Queens with all of my luggage for two hours and ended with me drunk on a plane at 6 a.m. this morning. So yeah. I, <laughs> I'm i tired. Um, it, was a, it was a great weekend. Um, I'm very glad about most of the things that have happened, but <laughs> it was just so chaotic. Like, we yeah. had so many events. I had... Like Friday was Caitlin's big birthday show. Mm-hmm. And so I that was the one I like booked a couple months back. So she played yeah. at the bitter end. Uh, we had a great turnout. It was a great show. Um, but I had also come from Jersey that day. And so I was exhausted. I hate, I hate being poor because when you're poor, you can't take an Uber from Jersey to Queens. You have to take the train. And it yeah, is no. so difficult. And my bags were so heavy because I packed very strategically because I was going to be gone for two weeks in multiple places. And, um, and then I didn't eat enough. I had one sandwich and then it was like 11 and I was like, I have a headache for some reason. And I was like, I think I need to like eat some French fries. Like I had to leave after the show and me and Noel went and got like chicken strips and fries and shit <laughs> because I was like, I might pass out. Yeah. And um, sorry, I'm I'm still dying. Um, but I was like, I might pass out. So we went and did that. And then I went back and rejoined the party. Um, because they all went for drinks. And I was like, I'm never drinking again. I I didn't even drink that. I had like two seltzers. Like it's not like yeah. I crazy. I just felt terrible that night, that whole night. And so then we didn't get back till after three. I go to bed. I think it was like close to seven or eight in the morning before when I fell asleep like I haven't slept like a normal person yeah and then I had like a work meeting and then I worked another gig that I'll tell you I'll tell you about next week if you stay in um but I worked another gig Saturday night that didn't end until 3 30 like in the morning so then I didn't go to bed again until like 8 a.m and then I had to be up for like 11 to I think I actually got up at like 10 30 because we went to the festival that Caitlin was playing at. And then she had another gig last night yeah. in the city. And so I didn't sleep any of those times. No. And then we got back from the gig this morning at like two or something. And maybe even later. I don't know. I don't know what time it was. And I had to basically like turn around and like pack my bag and get on a plane. Like I didn't go to bed. I just yeah. went and got on a plane. So I'm tired. I only slept a couple hours today when I got home. And uh, I'm pushing through, though. I'm thrilled right. to be here. Thrilled right. to do something where I can sit down and be on a computer and not run in circles <laughs> in hills. So, yeah. how are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. This week, the, the last week of September is always a roller coaster week for me um, because um, this week is the anniversary of two of my close friends who committed suicide well mm-hmm. one one is for sure suicide one was a car accident that we all think was intentional yeah. because there was no blood or like no alcohol or drugs in a system and no other cars around so it doesn't really make sense unless you just yeah so it's always like a rough week anyway but then like it was like a whole series of like ups and downs because like last week i bought my house but then the house was an adventure on the first on that Monday and then Tuesday was the yeah. anniversary of Matt's death and then Wednesday is my half birthday and Dan and I went to see a show um oh, which one we're gonna talk about it on Thursday because I have nothing else to talk about <gasps> um okay. so he'll have to wait till Thursday because I don't have a lot to talk about this week um I'll be waiting with bated breath but so then Wednesday so we saw the show and then Thursday was the anniversary of Sam's death and then Friday Maggie Smith died. Ugh. And I yeah. was a mess. But then, like, by the time that day ended, 
I was at work at Shays and um, Bobby Crichton, who um, is was the Duke of Wesselton in Frozen. After, so he's originally from Toronto, but during the run of Frozen, like when they were teching here, he moved here like permanently, like lives in Buffalo with his family. And so he was at the show and just like came to talk to me, which was wonderful. So I was like so excited to see Bobby. And then Saturday was fine, but like it was like just, I was exhausted, exhausted. And then yesterday, was um i was working at shays again and my friend Devin, who um is from buffalo originally but i met him when he was on the on your feet tour was in the show that was touring this week and so i was hanging out with him and he was like i have not been here for like for a show for seven years which i realized is because on your feet was this week seven years ago so like it was wow. literally like almost to the day that i saw him again and but then the bills game was fucking atrocious um i saw pieces of it while we were in between gigs yesterday <laughs> yeah it was rough but then the, so like i was like okay so like my emotions have been all over the place today is the anniversary of dan and i getting engaged and it was really we've been engaged for a year and it was all exciting and he knew i had to record so he just didn't have time for a full dinner so he bought a cherry pie to split and like um, some flowers just to like sh say Aww. something but also um i might cry again gavin creel passed away today and that fucking hurts <laughs> um he was far too young and like a lot of the posts i saw were just like heartbreaking and, like, one of the ones I saw was from Benj Pasek, who just was, like, the best thing you can do to be, what well, now, that like, if you're still alive, is to just live and not be afraid of living. And, like, mm -hmm. it gave me, obviously, it's a very different situation. He had cancer. And it was a very right. rare cancer. And he's known for two months that it was probably not going to be something he could be which still sucks, but it very much um, reminds me of Nick. Uh, why am I blanking on his last name? Uh, the one that just passed away a couple years ago? Yeah, the one who passed away during COVID. That, uh, yeah. Cordero. Uh, was it Nick Cordero? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That was the only name that was in my head, and then I was like, that would be super weird if that was the wrong name. But like the well, way- Well, now I'm questioning everything, but right, like, yeah. The, the way the Broadway community is like- Yes, it was Nick Cordero. Okay, the way the Broadway community is like surrounding and and mourning together feels very reminiscent yeah. of Nick Cordero. But then that also like is triggering because it puts everybody back in that emotional place we in were in during place, COVID. Yeah. And so like it's just not a not a like very good mental health week for me. <laughs> Same. Same, bro. So, um, now that I... But happy anniversary engagement anniversary. Yeah. I'm glad you're spending it with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so now that I have uh, successfully cried once again on this podcast, which I feel like every time I'm like, how has my life been? Let me just cry on it's screen okay. for you all. I cried all weekend, so I have no tears left. I have no right. tears left to give. It's right. Fine. No, no, no. I just apparently <laughs> save. I just save them for the camera. Yeah. Um, because but, it makes you like beautiful little flesh thanks. a little. My, uh, my eyes are really sparkly right eyes. now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in order to try to make it through this podcast, can you give me some uh, words of affirmation? Absolutely. I have like the best one that I like accidentally found in my uh, doom scrolling that resulted in you getting like 75 Instagram messages at once. Um, they were all really nice though they were really nice yeah. but they were at 6 a.m while i was not asleep yet <laughs> so it was a good time I'm yeah that's what for those of you who don't know me like that when i am in a bad spot, place mentally well, yeah i just send massive amounts of either videos or memes or screenshots of things to mary kate and rachel yeah at the worst times of the day 
never a normal time of day and so like they'll wake up and be like are you okay like, no. <laughs> what is going on um yeah see the problem was this was um 5 35 a.m that you sent it to me yesterday um which mm -hmm. was a sunday so i for sure wasn't awake um until significantly later than that so by the time i could respond to all of them you were already on your next mental breakdown so like Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep yep we had moved we had moved on to the next one so yes yesterday was a big day it was a big emotion day and we did everything in the rain so it was just the way it was gonna be oh, yeah. so yes i have great words of affirmation for you because this is one of those things i found during that time um they say nobody is coming to save you but many people have saved me even if they didn't intend to it can be as small as a smile from a stranger a nudge from the from an animal Words from a writer, the lyrics to a song, an observant friend. We are all saving each other every single day in tiny, seemingly insignificant ways. I love that. I thought so. I loved it too. I love that. Some, some good things happen at 5 a.m. Yeah. Well, I don't know if what we're going to talk, talk about is a good thing or not. We'll find it's, out. It's fine. Um... I mean, you know, it's not the most creative episode when 10 minutes into it, Dan goes, can I guess how this is going to end? And he guesses and I go. Sure. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it's not hard to figure out. But also to be fair, um, Dan was listening to me edit the podcast and mm -hmm. um, uh, I had quite a bit to take out <laughs> this time because of my house going crazy. Um, so I was like actively like listening to all of it to make sure I had the cuts right. And I got to the point where we were talking about the fact that last week um, opened up the idea of other governments knowing about this. Mm -hmm. And mini spoiler, but not really. In Atlantis, it is very much no longer a U.S. only situation. And so Dan has always been very confused into how we got from there. To Atlantis because he's watched Atlantis. He has not watched right. Stargate except for when he watches it with me. So he got so excited when I said that it was an episode where we finally talked to other governments that he made me watch Disclosure again. Ah, <laughs> poor Dan, poor Mary Kate. So then we watched <laughs> this episode, which while it wasn't great. Seemed fantastic because I had just finished mm -hmm. watching Disclosure again. Right, right, right. right. Um, yeah. So we are talking about Stargate SG-1, Season 6, Episode 18, Forsaken. It was rated 7.3 stars. So, like I said, not good, but significantly but better, better than Disclosure. Yeah, yeah. Because that was, what, like 6.4 or something? Yeah. Um, And it came out on February 21st, 2003. Um, on that day, we have the same top song, but the number one book is The King of Torts by John Grisham. Um, I think it's one of his series. Uh, I couldn't figure out. It seemed like when I looked at it, it was just listed under thriller novels. It like wasn't well, listed under a, a series, so it's mm -hmm. a standalone, I guess. But um, I think we've talked many times on this podcast about despite knowing John Gresham and his like place in the modern thriller literary world. I have never picked up a single book like this. Right. So right. I don't, I don't know. Um, the top movie is something that I think I have seen, but I would rather I had it. Um, <laughs> old school. I have not seen that movie, and but I be, probably won't ever watch it. To be fair, it is not any different than any other 2000s raunchy, like college comedy. American Pie. Right, like yes, American Pie, accepted. except yeah, all those. Except um, it's one of my is one of my all time favorite movies. So yeah, but you love what's it. his name, don't you? Like Justin Vic. Long. I do yeah. love Justin Long. Um, um, here's the thing: the reason I don't like old school is not because I don't think it has is funny. Like it, it has like Owen Wilson in it, but it also has Will Ferrell in it, and I don't know if I've made it clear just, just how much I fucking hate Will Ferrell. Uh, but I, I do. There's. I, his comedy is a different breed that I just well, I and, and the thing well. is, I think there's so I think from people from like the 80s and 90s, there's a split, and you are either a mm -hmm. Will Ferrell fan or an Adam Sandler fan because they're both mm, that makes sense. 
And they mm-hmm. are both the same kind of dumb, repetitive, unintelligent comedy. But I've never met anyone who really hardcore liked both of them. That makes sense. I've never thought about it that way, but that is very true. The, only person, the only person I know who likes both of them is my uncle, but he's also not smart. Um, So it's <laughs> Mo- Monica's. It's Monica's dad. We've talked about this plenty of times. <laughs> Um, and but I think that anyone who like is intelligent enough to not really like lowbrow comedy, but like yeah. has a soft spot, it's for one of those two, never both. And I'm very much an Adam Sandler girl, huge Adam Sandler fan. I have yeah. watched. I don't know that I've seen all of his movies, yet, but I've watched most of them. If not I, all of them. I have not watched Uncut Gems. <laughs> but... I did watch Uncut Gems. I went and saw it in theaters, and it was I. I almost walked out of it. I had to pee so bad. I did not know it was like a seventeen hour movie. <laughs> But I was like, so I kept being like, it'll end soon. I'm not going to go to the, because I went by myself and I was like, I don't want to just leave my stuff. I, it'll end soon. No, it doesn't. No. It never ends. Um, I, so the only Will Ferrell movie I really, truly love is Stranger Than Fiction, which is not a comedy. I haven't watched that one yet. And I think I would like it too. I think you would love it. But so if I like Adam Sandler's comedy, but I like Will Ferrell's serious acting. My brain says that I can't watch anything with Adam Sandler attempting serious acting. Like that is, and that probably is valid. That's yeah. probably valid because I hated Uncut Gems. I hated it. My God, <laughs> I wanted to like it so bad. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So old school was the number one movie that day. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Sure. Right. Sure, yeah. right. 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 That's where we came from. Oh. Um. On this day. Michael Jordan became the first player over 40 to score over 40 points in an NBA game. Ooh. And it was the day that Real Time with Bill Maher debuted on HBO. This hasn't been on all of time. All of time. Uh, just 21 years. Yeah. It feels like it's been on for like 50. <laughs> like, again, lack of yeah. timing and understanding. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> This episode was directed by Andy Makita, written by Damian Kindler, and edited by Eric Hill. Um, so we have nothing to talk about there, but we also have nothing to talk about with the guest star, because our top guest star for this episode is Martin Cummings, who played Aiden Corso, who we have already in length discussed on the podcast for Bates Motel. Because oh, that means I did that. Yes. He, <laughs> he, which it took me a minute because I was like, this name sounds so familiar. And then I pulled up his Wikipedia and I go, and these like known fours, I feel like this is, so I'm like going through everything. He played Peter, which was the husband of that rich girl who was best friends with Norma in season two. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So early in season two of Bates Motel, we did a deep dive on him. Yeah. 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 Makes so. sense. So if you want to know more about Martin Cummings, you have to go back to Bates Motel Season 2, Episode 3. Oh, look at you. You went to, like, specific episode. You, oh. God, you're so prepared. <laughs> I am so proud of you. I didn't even remember his name when you said it, so <laughs> we are. I mean, to be fair, I don't know what episode number that is if you're on YouTube. Like, when it actually says, like, Episode mm-hmm. 360. Thousand. Okay. This episode that we're recording right now is episode 368. So, yes, I couldn't tell you that number, but I do know it's Bates season two, episode three. So, Um, yeah. So, the team is on a planet to study a nebula. And Jack finds a photo on the ground, um, and he isn't really sure what the deal is because, as far as they know, humans have never been to the planet. Um, but let me also stop right there yeah. and say that's the description on Amazon that he finds a picture of a woman when there's not supposed to be humans there, and that is not relevant. Like it is, but it's not what this show is about. Oh. Because I was trying to, because I couldn't remember what I watched last. I keep moving a lot. So I was like, I don't even know if I was on the same account when I watched it last. Right. And so I read it and I was like, okay, not what this show is about. No. Um. Also, he's like looking through a telescope and it's like, I can't see anything. And Sam's like, well, that's because that's today. Um, but um, 
Jonas, before he can really like ask Sam about this picture, Jonas radios and he's like, I found something. You gotta come here. They're like, okay, where is here? Yeah. Um, but so they go, they head toward him and they find a crashed spaceship. And neither Teal'c nor Sam can figure out what species spaceship it is. So that's already new and exciting. Yeah. Um, they think that there were no survivors based on the way the ships crashed. Um, but it turns out there were, and they're behind them with weapons. Yay. Credits. What a good dramatic opening. This really it. was that bad of an opening. I No. No, I the stupid. opening, I think the opening was really good. It was well done. Mm-hmm. It was different um than a lot of what we have seen. And it was nice to have something that's like in the true like season one, explore and find new people, like vein of Stargate. Um, right. The story itself was a little cliche. But I still yeah, I mean, think, like you said, I figured it out too very early on. But I still think it was well made. And I almost mm-hmm. think it was so cliche that it made you second guess if you were correct about your guess. Right. Yeah. So Yeah, I think I think that's fair. I I I didn't really second guess if I was right or wrong. But I had questions still. Yeah. And I wouldn't have gotten exactly right on why it was. Well, when when Dan was like, I think this is what's going to happen, I almost was like, yeah, but that's too obvious. That can't be it. It was. Yeah. But. No, it was just really obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So the three survivors are from a planet called Hebriden. Um, and they have crash landed due to an asteroid storm, and they have no way off of the planet or any communication. Um, and they didn't have any idea what the Stargate was. So they've just been stuck here. Mm-hmm. Um, then we see a quick glimpse of a creature somewhere in the forest watching them. Um, don't that worry, looks that- vaguely like the other creatures that we've seen. Well, I mean, it's because it is dan jogstone again um eh. right right right. i figured that <laughs> but like it looked like one of the similar species we've already it, seen but it's, it's different it's, right it's it is it's not a species we've seen before it has an almost similar vibe to the unis yeah. um but i also feel like the creature that it actually looks the most like are um from doctor who I think it looks like, um, you know, Madame Vastra, the green lizard woman who mm-hmm. has the the wife and then like the Victorian. I think it looks like her and an Unas had a baby because it's the coloring mm. and like it's like the coloring mm. and physical makeup of an Unas, but very much the same like structural Structure. of, mm-hmm. of 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 a um, no, not a Slovene. What is the word? I have no idea what anything is called. I do, though. So that's why I'm like, (laughs) what? Um, Madame Vastra is a... I know she's married and part of the Pattern Oster gang. What is her species? Silurian. I always want to say Slovene, but the Slovene are the weird ones that fart a lot in the people suits. So it's not Oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Silurian. Um, so Sam offers to fix the spaceship and says that if they can't fix it, they can offer them sanctuary on Earth. Because here we are jumping to conclusions that humans are human. Humans um, are human and they are all good. They're all in it for the same reasons. Um. But Teal senses something and he doesn't know what it is. He's just like weirdly on edge. Um, so Sam goes aboard the ship to fix it. And then we see Teal still sure that there's something out there when Tannis, the one of the women, or the woman of the, the group of Hebred- Hebedri- Hebredian- Hebredians, Hebredians, I, 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 all the letters were there. All the letters were there, even in the correct order, but the pronunciation was not quite was not, not, not quite there. Right. I literally sounded that to me sounded like a kid like learning letters for the first time. It sure did. It sure did. 
but I was not going to do much better. So I was just going to let you fight. <laughs> um, there's a firefight and then um, a sonic blast is sent out from the ship to like scare off the aliens, which is probably the most interesting part of the episode. That was the worst sound I've ever heard in my life, I think. I was like, I need this to end. Like, and I didn't even have my TV up that loud, and I felt like it was deafening. I mean, it wasn't quite an actual sonic blast because then we right. would have gone deaf. Sure, uh, sure. But it it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't pleasant. Um This was my I had just awakened from my not quite long enough nap <laughs> from my plane ride. I was like, I need all of these sounds to stop. <laughs> That's totally fair. Um, the aliens, according to our friends, the Heb Heb Hebrideans, I'm get I'm gonna get it. Um, yeah, you are. Um, the aliens have been shooting them the whole time and just attacking them um, endlessly, and killed at least eight of their people. Um. Uh, they don't know where the people came, where the aliens came from, and they think maybe now that they know that the Stargate is a transporter, maybe they must have come through there. Yeah. Um, Aiden, the captain of the group, calls them savages and is like, they've killed our people and hung up their bodies and describes a really gruesome thing for Stargate, actually. You don't see anything gruesome, but the description is pretty gruesome for Stargate. Um, yeah. But Tannis is hurt very, very badly, and she needs immediate medical attention. So they take her to Earth, but Aiden is like, we have to stay. I have to stay with my ship. I can't go with you. He insists on staying there. Ooh, I'm so sorry. So they split up. Um, and Sam and Jonas report everything to Hammond. Um, and he's like, they're very advanced humans, but they have no Stargate. Um, and he ex they explain their situation. And uh, Hammond is like, can you trust them? And Sam's like, probably. Probably, yeah. She is like, uh, yeah, they're, they're just like a little more trusting than they, they need to be. Um, which is interesting. And Sam does, that point does come up later. Um mm -hmm. But Hammond gives them permission to take the Nequita generator with them to help this ship. Um, but they also need to bring SG-15 as backup. Um, this, and then we see, um, this is where we see that Jack really does not fully trust the Hebra Heb Hebrideans? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I can't talk today. Um, and he's just like real snarky, but not like normal Jack snarky, like legitimately not a fan. Mm -hmm. um, Tannis, back at SGC, Tannis wakes up in, from the infirmary and Jonas is talking to her and he's like trying to find out more about her and like chat with her. But she immediately turns the conversation back to the Stargate, um, which is like, Red flag number at least six. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it's definitely the largest red flag so far. Um, so far, yeah. But it's, it's not the first. Um, right. So back on the planet, Sam's trying to repair the ship. And Aiden is flirting with her, like, very obviously and very badly. And he's like, oh, like, so you're, you're all of these, like, you're um, in the military, you're a pilot, you're a scientist, you're like, and you're beautiful. What? And she's like, huh, thanks. And then this is my favorite. He was like, you don't have anyone back on your planet. And she just goes, and not that I care to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Sam. Oh, oh Sam. Sam. It's just so funny to me because um, I was listening to the 
No Place Like Tara episode today where it was Martooth's first episode. And they were like, what? pro Sam and Martooth getting together. And I was like, I get it. And in that moment, I understand. But Sam and Jack forever. <laughs> I don't like that it doesn't let me do but other things when I want. Off. There it goes. Oh, there. Well, I, that's the thing. Bad timing. Now. I know. Uh, I got really good at the heart one. How do I? I don't think. So you're just supposed to have to hold it, but I always act like a fool when I do it because but me and Shania had a call last week and we just sat here and did hearts for like 10 minutes at one I don't. I don't think I have this. This. Oh. Yeah, I don't have this. I don't have these magical buttons that you have. Have you updated recently? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> cool. um um but she, then he asks her about jack distrusting them he's like jack really seems like he or colonel, like the colonel really seems like he does not trust us and sam's like to be fair none of us trust you <laughs> he just shows it he's just the least um subtle about it yeah uh and she, she was like he he has no fear and in showing you that he distrusts you and once he trusts you it's like a switch flips like from not to yes where the rest of us are like more like sliding into the kiddie pool yeah Yeah. a little bit at a time he doesn't have that um and then um the alien creature um sneaks back to where they are near the ship because i forgot to tell say earlier that in the firefight one of the aliens is killed um yeah so this guy she uh sneaks back to like find the other alien and jack stops him and is trying to talk to him but then lyle pender the third member of the team who is by far my least member favorite member of the three like because yeah the other two at least like have are, some are like yeah they're like charming con men he mm-hmm. he's like the guy you leave in the car because he's just gonna give it away every time he's gonna act too fast yeah i was like i was like if like aiden is ted bundy this guy is like ed game like no one is volunteering to hang out with him yeah absolutely um <laughs> And, but Lyle starts acting a fool and starts shooting at the alien and scaring it away. And Jack's like, dude, I needed him alive. I need more information. And Lyle's like, well, he's just going to lie to you. So, you know, you know that guy on TikTok who runs around with a giant red flag? I love him. Me too. I want to get honey roasted shirt. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I, he's just circling this ship at this point with his giant yeah, red flag. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So then Aiden keeps trying to flirt with Sam and now he starts asking like, oh, tell me more about things that I'm not allowed to know about questions. And this, okay. I understand that the government has rules and how you talk about things and blah, 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 and classified and what is not. But on Earth, when someone asks them about the Stargate, they are like, we don't know anything about it. Then they go to an alien planet where they don't know anything about these people. And they're like, what about the Stargate? And they're like, here, let me tell you all of the research I've done in the last eight years. And it is. Did you want to know the secret we found out yesterday that we've never told anyone? It is so confusing. I'm like, I don't, I don't, if I have classified information, your species would not change whether it was classified or not. Right. Right. Especially like once, once you find out that they don't know that the Stargate is a transport, don't tell them anything else. Tell them that. Yeah. Oh my God. Then they can do anything. They can take over the world. You don't know how strong they are. So, um... The other guys, so Teal, Glyle, and Jack are still out searching for the alien. Um, and then we get back 
to SGC where Jonas is in his office looking for answers because he just has a gut feeling that something's wrong because Jonas is the only one who knows what red flags are. Um, and oh, so he's a smart person on the team. <laughs> And so he's, like, reading more about the, the Celtic language and the name of the ship and all of the research stuff that he and Daniel do all the time and are the only reason mm -hmm. we actually learn anything on the show. Um, and then Hammond comes into his office and he's like, hey, um, there was a security breach and someone in the infirmary tried to, like, get into the computer system. Do you think it could be Tannis? And Jonas is like, honestly maybe yeah like i don't i don't have a read on her at all yeah. and hammond's like okay well i'm gonna go talk to her and jonas is like let's let's try something else because obviously at this point she has just done nothing but lie so right. talking to her is not gonna help so jonas comes up with a plan on how to get information from tannis um Back on the planet, Teal'c and Jack find a camp, and they are getting even more doubt about the Hebrideans because of all the stuff that is in this camp. And um, they're starting to seriously ask questions when they hear shots, and they go after the sounds and start yelling at Lyle because they were like, literally, all we said was to capture him alive. Yep. Um, uh, so... Sam gets the ship's computer up and running. And so she's like, okay, Aiden, like, start off the ship. And he immediately starts changing the topic to ask her about her life and emotions, which makes no sense. No. Uh, and then on Earth, uh, Jonas brings Tannis into his office and he's like, oh, like, Sorry, I'm just cleaning up all these riches and artifacts that I found on a planet. Oh, no. Let me put them away. And then she kisses him. Bold move. Um, Women just kiss him in out of nowhere. Who does that? So. <laughs> um... Well, it's okay. Jonas is very uncomfortable with it also. To be fair, I might would kiss Jonas out of nowhere. Like, oh, I'm in love with that man. He he is so cute. Um, and so smart and not judgy. Yeah. Very open-minded. God, I love him. The problem is Jonas is the correct answer, like, of who to kiss. Um, <laughs> like, Daniel Jackson, but he's I do love people. Daniel Jackson. He, and I, the especially problem is, glasses, he's but. kissed so many people though that like it's a little right. concerning. The problem is if you line up all of the men of the Stargate in a room, I'm going for Jack every time. Every time I know you are. Every time, <laughs> I know you are. Um, you're you're a Jack gal. I'm, I'm a Jonas gal now. But here's the thing: you look at my future husband. That is Dr. Daniel Jackson. Like, there's no... Yeah, I yeah, did, yeah, I did not end up with a Jack. I ended up with a Daniel. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, I got time. I could still end up with a Jonas. You could still end up with a Jonas. <laughs> um, but, so, after Jonas gets sincerely awkward at her kissing him, Hammond calls for Jonas to leave the room and leave her alone in the office. So they can figure out what she will do in the office, which was the whole plan. The kiss was never mm -hmm. part of the plan. Jonas, that was yeah. genuine confusion. Um, Bless his heart. So Sam is still working on getting all the systems of the ship up and running. And once she gets the computer fully up, um, the last thing that was playing on the computer before the ship crashed started to play. And it was a distress signal that mentioned that this was a prison ship. Yeah. Um, and Lyle is now missing. So yeah. everything's going really well. Uh, Teal'c and Jack find the alien. Um, 
and who and he tells them that his name is Warwick and he is actually the captain of the Severus. Yeah. Back, Traitors. back of the ship, Sam ambushes Aiden and calls him out on it being a prison ship. And he's like, listen, when the asteroid hit, the cells lost life support. So I had to let the passengers out so that they wouldn't die. And they took the ship over. And it's my fault that we're here and that we crashed. And if I would have just let them die, we would have been able to get the ship out of here. And so it's my fault. All of the other crew members are dead. And I think Sam might actually believe him. I think she did too. And I was like, girl, just because he flirted with you is not a reason to listen I to know. someone. But to be fair, in that moment, that was the best acting that he did for the whole episode. Because in yeah. that mo in that moment, I was like, you know, if I wasn't a hundred percent sure that Dion Johnstone would always be the winner, like the good guy, yeah, right. <laughs> um, I would, I would maybe believe you. Um. So Warwick tells them his side of the story, and it's very, very similar to the lie that Aiden just told. Um about letting the prisoners out and everything and um but about the but it turns out that the well, three of them were the only prisoners everyone else on the ship was part of his crew and now they're all dead um and jack mostly believes for it but what seals the deal for him is he shows work the picture that he found on the ground and work starts to like cry a little bit because it's a picture of his wife that he and he tells them all about how on their planet, his race saved the um, Hebrideans from the gold. And they're the reason that these people, like these humanoid people, have advanced technology and that the gate is no longer on their planet and that they've lived in harmony and commingled and co-married and everything. And like, and like Jack's like, Jack and Teal are like, yeah, this guy's for sure telling the truth. Um, yeah. Uh, so Sam calls Jack and he's like I need to tell you she's like I need to tell you something he's like oh, boy do I need to tell <laughs> you something um, and as she's trying to like radio him Lyle knocks her out um, I hate Lyle yeah Jonas and Tannis come back to the planet and um, Lyle unties Aiden and shoots Jonas uh, with the Zat, not with a like their laser guns. Mm -hmm. And then Tana and they're like, okay, we're gonna fly the ship out of here. And Tannis is like, wait, let's not. We need to go through the Stargate. You have no idea the planets that are out there and the things that they have on them. I found these things out when I was on Earth, and now we have hostages. Like, let's go. Um. So, Warwick leads Jack and Tilt to the ship and, like, pushes himself through the sonic boom to, like, turn the defenses off so that they can save Sam. And then the trio is heading to the gate and they take Jonas along as a hostage. Um, and they start to dial an address in the gate and uh, Jack arrives and he's trying to stop them and Jonas, like, signals to him that, like, don't, like, let them go. Like, uh, so... They go through the gate, um, and they wind up in the gate room in SGC and immediately get arrested. Justice. And um, Tannis is like, I, you planted the address on the computer. And he's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so they get the prisoners back um, on the ship, and they help Warwick out. And Warwick thanks Jack for believing him and Jonas for having the plan. And Jonas says that he never trusts a girl who kisses on the first date. Um, I can wait till the second. Yeah. No rush. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Dan didn't kiss me till the second date. See? There you go. I was mad about it, but it's fine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times good times um yeah so what are your thoughts theories questions concerns um i feel like none of this is ever gonna be repeated 
<laughs> like I don't think we're going to talk to any of these species again. Um, it okay. felt very much like a one-off with Hebrideans and the, what are the other ones called? I don't know. No idea. Yeah. Yeah. So the Unas looking ones. I um, will tell you that at least one of those characters for sure comes back. Like as the character in this episode, yes. Okay, like not as yeah, no, not the <laughs> no, no, not the actor. No, Dion Jones Johnson will be everything, but at least sure, one sure. of those, at least one of those characters mm -hmm. reappears. Interesting. I won't tell you who mm -hmm. or when or why, but maybe it's Tannis, and she's decided that's the girl, right? That's her name. Yeah. Maybe she's decided she's going to leave her evil ways behind so that she can marry Jonas. So I, I have no real predictions. I just. I'm just a little unhinged today. And that, so those are the things that I think are going to happen. That is, you know, sorry, I'm trying to get my phone to start working so that I can tell you something about the next episode. Um, our next episode. Uh, we didn't have any trivia or nothing. Oh, no, we do have trivia. I don't know. Okay. Why. Yeah, no, we do have trivia. Um, but we were talking about predictions, so I was going to give you mm. info, but I see, I see. that's, you're right, that's not the order we do things in normally. <laughs> that's, that's not, but it's okay, um, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, well, because the trivia is kind of weird, like, all of it's just, like, really random. Um, the ship, like, the exterior of the ship was entirely digital. <clears throat> um, which is, I think the first time that they have something like that is like just and it was created by rainmaker effects and it is all digital except for one scene is a map painting like but it's all mm -hmm. and none of it's practical so that's kind of cool um yeah. in in all of the pile of artifacts that uh, jonas leaves out for tanis one of them is um an old crown that was a very very important artifact in a MacGyver serial. <laughs> um, and then my other two are about Jack, but more specifically about Richard Dean Anderson. So um, in this episode at the beginning, Jack is looking through the um, telescope and he acts real dumb and like pretends that he doesn't know anything about astronomy, which... Right is legitimately incorrect because we've had entire episodes in the early seasons that hinged on the fact that Jack is a amateur stargazer. Like he has a telescope, yeah. like that is his personality. Um, and so some fans have like theorized that he like is purposely being dumb because he's bored. But, um, as the series went on, because remember, Richard Dean Anderson, like, Rick was one of the producers. And as the series went on, he kind of pushed the, um, uh, Joseph Malozzi calls it intellectually relaxed version of Jack. Because it was, he was able to play more and have more, like, snark and have more fun with the character. And as the show went on and the, the audience was more comfortable with the characters and kind of, like their what where they fit in a two-dimensional box he let go of some of those things that made jack more nuanced in the mm -hmm. early seasons which is both positive and negative in a way because i think it it adds to the charm of jack and and it is allows rick to play more but it does take away i think because I personally feel like the only way that the Sam and Jack relationship actually works is if Jack is as like secretly smart and closed off and, and um, guarded and like humor as a defense mechanism as he is in like seasons two and three versus the, the kind of like dumb jock version that is appearing now. Yeah. Um, but the uh, one of the other things that led to him kind of changing how he played Jack or how he wanted Jack to be written was that sometime in the middle of the show, I think somewhere around season four, he went to Tibet and like um, 
went on like this really intense spiritual journey and like became like hardcore Tibetan Buddhist. And he wears um, a mala, which is like the prayer bead bracelets. And he actually has it on all of the time on the show. Um, but usually um, it's either not in the shot or he's also got like a cuff on or he's got the jacket on. So this episode is one of the few episodes where there's like a really big close up on his arms as he's picking up that picture from the ground. Mm -hmm. It focuses on that prayer bead. And so it's really interesting um, because part of his like, just not caring and not trying to be all inside the character anymore. It was actually directly related to his actual like spiritual awakening. Interesting. Yeah. So um, I love that for him. With all that before I talk about next week's episode, because you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, do you want to punch anybody? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Do I? Um, but I feel like I am supposed to pick one person, not yeah. seven. Right. That is the rules. So I guess I'm going to go with Lyle. And here's the thing. Well, yes, that is a good answer. I believe yeah. he reminds me and gives off the vibe of the guy. Oh gosh. What show is he? I think he's in Breaking Bad, but he's in like a thousand things. I think his name is Jesse something. Oh no. A hundred percent. His name is Jesse. And we've talked to Jesse Clemens. We've talked about him on the show yes. before. He plays, right. he plays the annoying fucking friend on Friday night. Like, yes. and who's dating the hot cheerleader and then murders someone for no reason. Spoilers for season three of Friday night lights. Um, a hundred percent. That's, and that's who I the thought vibe. he was. That's who I thought he yeah. was the whole time. I know that the actor wasn't the same and they're not the same age right. and that wouldn't have worked. And I know mm -hmm. that the character wasn't exactly that, but I literally was watching it. I was like, that's that fucking douchebag from Friday Night Lights. It's the same person. And that's and that's how I feel about him in every movie I watch him in. Like I've seen him in like five movies. He was in something recently. He was in something recently that I was like genuinely like, but that can't be him because I don't hate that character. Uh, yeah, let me see what he. Yeah, he started trying to branch out a bit. I think. Right. Uh, um, yeah, he was in Breaking Bad. Was I think the first place I saw him. Um, he did Killers of the Flower Moon, where he also played a terrible person. Jungle Cruise, maybe. I don't think he played a terrible person. In Jungle no, he Cruise. did. He played a terrible person in Jungle Cruise. Did he? I couldn't remember that. Um, no, I actually what I watched him in recently was the ep his episode of Black Mirror where he played mm. an even worse person than any of the other ones we're talking about. Oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Right. I have not seen that yet. So, oh, no. oh, he was the, he was the Irishman. That's what I was. That was what I was trying to think that I like saw him and that I didn't hate him as much. I mean, he's a bad guy. He's He's one of the mobster guys. Like, right. he's not a good person. But he doesn't give off that same annoying vibe where I'm like, I wish anyone else was in this show other than you um, in, the, yeah. in that no, movie. No, I'm literally going through his entire, like, list of things mm -hmm. right now. And there is not a thing in here that I have seen that he doesn't play a dick. Yeah. Yeah. But he's married to oh he's married to Kristen Dunst, which is all Kristen Dunst yeah. is always shocking to me. Every always time I shocking. I know that's what oh. I was trying. I was gonna say he's and he's what I was trying to figure out his name. I was like Jesse, and he's married to someone that doesn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> that was, um, that's the way I explained him. But no, oh the reason. So the episode where he played the asshole in Black Mirror. I don't know if you saw, but Black Mirror just announced that their newest mm -hmm. season is going to feature like sequel episodes which I've, they've never done before and that episode is one of the ones that's getting a sequel and i'm so i've only excited. seen the first episode i've i have never watched all of it like i have never sat through and watched all of it but i think i've watched like three or four or five individual episodes and that's one of the ones i like the most yeah it's on my list that i like yeah it's probably my next um we'll probably say next week whenever i start needing to like of myself and stream some binge something yeah that'll probably be next um so then oh so you're gonna punch lyle i mm -hmm. um he is also the number one answer but i knew you were gonna pick him because he's the number one answer um so i'm gonna pick tannis um because while tannis and aiden both try to use sex as a way to like mm -hmm. get information Aiden at least like has enough respect for Sam to attempt to be charming and like slow game it. 
Yeah. And Tannis is just like, I'm going to make out with you and tell you you're cute. And then at the end, when she's like, and he's like, everything was a lie. And she's like, not everything was a lie. I really do think you're cute. I was like, I will stab Punch you. In the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Absolutely. Great. So choice. who is your MVP? My future husband, <laughs> Jonas Quinn. <laughs> Um, yeah. And mine is, uh, my future husband, mm -hmm. Colonel Jack O'Neill, uh, because mm -hmm. he never trusted these assholes from yeah. the jump. From no. the jump. Don't worry, I won't tell Dan that you have a different future husband. Right. Dan drove me three hours to meet him, so, like, it's his own fault, then, really. And then, <laughs> didn't wait in line with me for the picture. Just let me do it by myself. He was like, this is your moment. This is not about me. Yeah, it's no, this is really his fault. Like, if you end up <laughs> marrying Richard Dean Anderson for some wild reason, <laughs> I'm blaming The Dan. man is almost 80. I think we're I okay. <laughs> it's uh, fine. Um, next week's episode is rated a little bit higher. Um, and it is. One of the strangest episodes. Um, great, can't wait. Yeah, it's a it's a very strange episode. Um, someone who we have not seen for a very long time is going to be back, sort of. <laughs> yeah, it's not confusing at all. No, 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 no. Um, It'll be great. It'll be so great. Um, <laughs> but also we're, we're headed toward the last four of the season. So, uh, I mean, yeah, we have four episodes left this season. So things are getting Rev it up. And remember, we talked about this at the last season wrap up. Every season from here on out, they thought it was going to be the last season. So every season is going to end with something much bang, bigger. Bang. Yeah. So. Let's keep that in Ooh. mind for the next couple episodes. All right, I'm emotionally prepared. <laughs> Let's All do right. this. All right, well, um, if you, I don't know how to, like, I always try to say, if you have comments about and try to pull up something specific from our episode, but, like, we are unhinged right now. So, like, if you want to marry anyone, I was like, right. So I was like, unless you are also <laughs> trying to marry a character from a show that's 25 years old and that is now in their <laughs> grown ass adult life. Um, yeah, other, other than that, <laughs> I don't know what you would want to possibly talk to us about. Um, but you can do any of that at, um, death and aliens at gmail.com or at any of the social media at death and aliens. You can find me everywhere at E-N-K-A-Y underscore superstar. And you can find me at C-E Cloud 13. And I just zoned straight out. I was, and was like, like, I'm done. Guys, this, is, so this is us without alcohol. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. Oh, uh, um, oh man. Good luck what a time. when we have season wrap-ups and DNAs and shit in the future. Woo. Yep. All right. Um, with that, we will talk to you on Thursday. Bye. See ya.